Okay. Uh, I would say let's start. Let's uh, slowly start and um, uh, see uh, what this lecture is about. Uh, so today we will do two things. Uh, first, in uh, the beginning, we will spend some time uh, to do uh, a recap of how the Border Gateway Protocol uh, uh, works, the interdomain routing protocol of the Internet. Get a, a brief, uh, like all. How many of you do you remember how BGP works? Two, great. Two, two plus three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we have a fair distribution. So we'll spend pretty much the first hour of the lecture to do a recap and uh, repeat some of the fundamentals. Um, and that uh, uh, there are more things to learn uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, some of the things you might know how they work uh, when we like jump into the details they become uh, more complex than uh, we think initially so it's good uh, to go over them uh, together uh, in the second part of the lecture uh, I will talk about uh, uh, some of the problems of BGP, uh, which is uh, actually one of the uh, a, a notorious uh, protocols of the internet. It suffers uh, from many different uh, problems. And uh, a good uh, uh, example and a good uh, as, um, Try to, to understand. So we will uh, uh, see some of the problems and then we will use it uh, as a starting point uh, to see some of the research that is going on uh, in the community uh, uh, on uh, how you can improve BGP using uh, software defined networks. Naturally, SDN. Uh, find also applications at the interdomain level, which is uh, maybe one of the uh, complex, uh, more complex and challenging. Uh, what uh, 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 has been going on, and in particular, we will focus on one proposal that uh, started here. Uh, in the fourth, we will discuss this uh, idea. Uh, and that uh, Capital uh, uses SDN uh, principles. It's also called routing as a service, uh, in other words. Um, we will discuss this idea, and then um, uh, at the end, uh, we will discuss a framework that has uh, uh, also been developed uh, uh, by colleagues uh, here in Fort and uh, in uh, actually mostly in Switzerland, uh, primarily in ETH Zurich. Uh, it's a framework for experimentation that is based on the internet in part and which enables uh, experiments with uh, BGP uh, and with uh, software-defined networks. Called Siren. How many of you know now Siren? Good. How many of you have started playing with Siren? Two edges from the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is it's coincidental. <laughs> okay. Um, good. Okay, so and uh, let's start. Uh, let me start uh, and uh, of course, you know the interdomain routing protocol, BGP, uh, uh, is the exterior gateway uh, routing protocol of the Internet. As you see in this figure, here we have uh, an Internet service provider that is called also uh, an autonomous system. Uh, within uh, an autonomous system, we have an interior gateway protocol, an IGP. Uh, 
uh, an autonomous system is uh, free to choose any IGP it likes, uh, but uh, at between autonomous systems, we have only one exterior gateway protocol globally in the global internet, and uh, that is uh, the BGP version 4 that is used today, <coughs> or in other words, uh, the border uh, gateway protocol. Um, just to get an idea of the scale of this, uh, how many autonomous systems do you think we have in the internet today? Okay. The world. Two hundred autonomous systems. Other guess? It's too long. No. Yes. Okay. How many countries there is? It's orders of magnitude. Uh, how many? We have uh, around 150 countries. How many countries? Okay, let's or say 10 autonomous systems per country. I think it would be millions. What? Wouldn't be millions. If you think that every autonomous system has a, a gateway router uh, to communicate with other auto autonomous systems, <coughs> it should be uh, about 1 million, I would say. But here we don't talk about the routers, the autonomous systems. Yeah, the autonomous systems. Uh, this is too high. <laughs> Somewhere, in <between>. Somewhere in <laughs> the middle. <laughs> so the, uh, uh, the correct answer is uh, somewhere around uh, 40,000 autonomous systems uh, uh, that are uh, active in the internet. A bit more than 40,000, a bit more than 40,000. Okay, so we have a, a big uh, like uh, ecosystem of autonomous systems that they all uh, interconnect with the border gateway protocol. And let me ask with a question to you. Uh, when, uh, and if you remember from your computer networks uh, course, uh, which two do you think were the design goals of the internet routing system? The domain level in particular. Two design goals. Yes, Mihaly. I think that uh, we don't want to have uh, failures in packets, loss basically, so uh, there can be just one path from one host to another, one router to another. Tolerance, okay. And scalability, because we want to... Okay, nice, I like the second one, scalability. Scalability. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, what did we do to for scalability? Okay, I'll come back to this. And th and the second one. Um, Now I'm talking about the routing system, not the control plane of the internet. Uh, so scalability is correct. Uh, like uh, millions of routers. Scalable to the size of the internet and to the Here. Okay, now I'll sit and wait for the second one. Maybe the shortest path or the fastest path to find the the fastest uh, way 
in between uh, routers. It's uh, yes, Sava. This could be, but in practice, it's not especially for very efficient paths. Um, Analyzation because we don't want to call uh, generalization, Michali. I think that's true. That's true. I think this generalization is, you know, a, a design principle of the internet in general. Yes. Not exactly what I'm looking for here, okay. but it, it might relate in some way. A hint, the word autonomous system. Meaning of this word already. Race, yes. Okay, we don't want the... Uh, we want the one ISP to be uh, totally cardinals. Uh, independent. Independent from the other ISP and can be precisely. Okay. <coughs> and how and we call this auto autonomy. Okay, so these were two fundamental uh, design, design uh, goals uh, of the Internet Routing System. Uh, and for these two reasons, uh, the Internet Routing System is what? Yes. I asked them. Nice, very nice. Um, all right. So now um, let's focus on uh, BGP in particular, uh, and uh, BGP, uh, um, so who can tell me some of its uh, uh, features? A description of BGP in one line, um, which keywords would, could we have there? Would be a protocol that connects routers both inside an autonomous system and uh, between autonomous systems as well. Correct. But I need not a descriptive. Okay. Uh, a I descriptive think it uses synopsis. I need some key features. Okay. This is uh, EBGP and the IBGP are features, for example. Uh, no, this is, I would uh, say that this is uh, functions of BGP, parts of BGP. Finds the shortest path between two routers to communicate. Correct. Uh, do you remember what type of protocol BGP uses? What type of protocol BGP is? Based on the Dijkstra algorithm, I think. What type of packets uh, that can be? At link state and the other type? It's called path. Path vector, correct. Actually, to be more accurate, we had said distance vector. Do you remember distance vector? Okay, what we learned in the introductory uh, 
in the introductory computer networks course, we usually learn distance vector. Um, uh, BGP is a special type of distance vector that's called path vector. Okay, in our case is path vector. So, and of course, there are other uh, distance vector protocols and so on. Okay, this is one feature, key feature of, of BGP. Now, let's try to find an, another key feature of BGP. Um, I don't know if you will remember this, probably not. Uh, but what uh, really distinguishes BGP from all the other routing protocols uh, that we uh, learned that, that, that exist, like OSPF, RIP, uh, is that BGP is a policy based protocol, okay, policy based. I have a question now for you. Can someone explain me what is the difference of a policy-based routing protocol compared to a, a traditional, a, a normal routing protocol? Get a wild guess. Maybe the policy based protocol is dynamic while the traditional is static and doesn't change. Not, not exactly. Another one adventurous. Uh, so basically the difference is the following. So in most routing protocols, we try to optimize uh, the path, like based on the distance, the number of hops, or based on the bandwidth, uh, or based on the link cost of, uh, of, of the link. Try to find the path with the minimum uh, link cost. Um, so these are uh, usually optimized to reflect some uh, network uh, performance metric like the latency, the bandwidth, uh, they connect to the performance of the path. Okay, these are mo what most routing protocols do. Uh, BGP is a bit different because in BGP policies, we don't care that much about performance, we care about policies. Okay, what are policies? Uh, policies are uh, the easiest way to think of policies is money, okay? Policies are business agreement, path that costs me less, I go through the cheaper economic uh, uh, transit provider. Um, uh, but then policies uh, are not just uh, uh, economic criteria. Uh, policies could also, we could have also policies for security, uh, uh, reasons uh, and uh, other uh, for scalability reasons uh, other reasons this reason BGP provides some uh, tunes some parameters we can tune it uh, to take decisions based on policies and these are nothing more than some weights that we can give uh, to certain prefixes and to prefer these prefixes over other prefixes based on some way that express the will of the administrator. Okay. Usually the administrators and the higher level executives define the policies which then we translate them into, we map them into the network. Does this make sense?
understand or want to. So, so we have these uh, key characteristics of BGP. It's a policy-based distance vector protocol. Can I ask something? Yes. Uh, why the, um, the shortest path isn't connected with the cost of the path? Because you said traditional uh, protocols. Yes. Let me give you an example. L let's say that here we are University of Crete. We have our autonomous system. Uh, here we have Google. Uh, the data centers of Google. Uh, and let's say that we have two providers. We have uh, a OT or Cosmote today. Uh, and we have uh, another provider uh, that, uh, let's say, is uh, EVET, GRNet. Okay. It's the academic institution. And let's say, for simplicity, I don't uh, know if this happens in reality, GRNet is one, two hops from uh, Google, uh, but OT is directly connected to Google. Okay, here we have another AES, and here we have another AES. Okay, so University of Crete has a very cheap uh, relationship with GRNet, obviously, it's you know, also an academic network. Uh, while it could pay much more to get a uh, transit for, from OTE. Okay, so in this case, uh, a policy which is very likely to apply is that uh, I will set my traffic through here because it's, uh, it's cheaper and uh, even if uh, OTE is uh, shorter. The path through OTE is shorter. Oh, all right. Okay, so now let's move on and uh, remind us uh, some more features of BGP. Uh, <coughs> who can tell me what is the difference between external and internal BGP? Maybe also using this figure. Other, other hands? Thanks. Uh, internal is used inside the autonomous system. Autonomous systems, uh, every other autonomous system, uh, one protocol pro mm. for everyone. You mixed up something here. It's um, <laughs> no, no. You said that uh, in the correct order. Uh, so, uh, Michal, you said uh, that internal is inside the autonomous system, yeah. and this is correct, uh, but you also said that uh, it can be anything that the autonomous system wants. I think... Hey, yeah. let, me, let me follow up on this point, because I think it could be a point of confusion. So, internal BGP is different from the interior gateway protocol. Both are internal. The internal gateway protocol can be anything that the autonomous system wants. It can be any protocol like OSPF, NLP, and so on. But internal BGP, uh, a protocol that is part of BGP, is not a different protocol, it's mm -hmm. a component of BGP uh, that is fixed to stone how it works uh, and is used. Uh, to communicate between the border routers, so the blue routers here, to communicate between them, not the white routers. The, this, uh... But, uh, yes. Uh, 
and correct the external BGP is the part we see here uh, that talks between border routers that are in different autonomous systems. Okay, mm -hmm. and this, this is an easy way to, to remember it. The internal BGP talks between border routers that are in the same autonomous system and that are in different <coughs> autonomous systems. Okay, one IBGP versus EBGP. Two. BGP messages. Okay, let's count. Let's find three BGP messages. Announce an announcement from a router that I kept the path to this router to the other router. Correct. Uh, How is it called? Announcement. Announcement. BGP announcement. Yes. Or BGP advertisement. When we have a failure, uh, the message that is sent from not the router that the not the router that there is a failure, the link. We have two routers and we have a broken link. And after uh, some time we have again an announcement that says that I can no longer connect to this router. Uh, I think that's a, that's a message too, but a different kind of message. Okay, correct. Who, who remembers the name? Is how do we say the opposite of an announcement? Denounce. Secret. Draw. So basically we have here BGP advertisement withdraw correct and maybe another one. So these are the two most important messages. Yes? Uh, when we connect a new router and we want to take uh, inform the other that okay, now I'm connected, send me your path. Uh, this also... It's a... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Okay, correct. No, this is not advertisement. This is open. Yes. So basically, when you begin, you are you want to establish a, a BGP session with your peer. The very first message you send is the open message. It's like the TCP SYN that you uh, begin the the connect the the session. Um, okay. And then we have also something else that is called keep alive. Uh, not, and there are some notifications too, but okay, these are the, the most important uh, messages. <coughs> Good. Okay, next topic. Let's see who will uh, remember this. And please, uh, also more guys, try to, to participate. BGP, uh, it's called BGP attributes. And uh, as a hint, I will give you AS path. An attribute, what does it mean in Greek or in Spanish?
The gateway router couldn't be an attribute of BGP. No. Something that is a, a part of the message to give you. Part of the announcements in particular. So, yes, paths. The paths inside the, every announcement have some paths inside it. Nice, nice. So, a path is an attribute. Correct, okay. correct, Michael, very nice. <coughs> um, so, in other words, an easy way to remember is BGP attributes are characteristics of a route or of a prefix. Can I ask something? Yes. So what kind of packets does BGP send? Okay, so uh, uh, an advertisement uh, has inside a list of prefixes which an um, advertisement I, I announce. Okay, so prefix, I don't know, 160 uh, dot uh, 12 dot 12 dot something. Okay, so uh, for each prefix, let's say for the 160.12.12 slash 24 each prefix is associated with a list <coughs> of attributes okay the attributes are uh, characteristics of the prefix uh, they could be the path for example uh, to the prefix um, the path in particular is a mandatory attribute uh, every uh, uh, prefix announcement carries the path, the, A, the AES path. Uh, so this is the more, most well-known attribute, but then there are also other attributes. We, we have uh, uh, the, the type, the origin AES, the local preference, and, and so on. This is, uh, if you want to dig into more advanced topics of BGP, you can uh, look uh, into these features. But the most important is the AES path, the local preference, which is basically just a weight that you assign to uh, an announcement and which propagates throughout the autonomous system to indicate it how much you want it. Okay. So we can include the host, the host that hosts so that the router can connect directly. Fast and forth. So that means that this router can connect directly to everyone that has the prefix 160 12 12 dot xxx with xxx. Hey, uh, Michali. Uh, uh, if you receive an announcement uh, for a prefix like this, this doesn't mean that you are directly connected. You mean that you can connect, but... Yes, because, for example, the prefix could be here, it could be this one, uh, and this announcement will propagate first here, then here, then here, so it might reach here. Okay. However, uh, and this uh, announcement starts with high BGP inside the correct continuous. Yes, and then it goes. It could go. Uh, you know, uh, it could start here with high BGP, then go through eBGP, then high BGP, eBGP goes uh, like that. Every router can do an announcement, correct? inside the uh, It depends how you configure it. Uh, usually, yes. So, if we configure a router and let's say I configure a router inside the UOC and I say, you know what, I can connect you with 
just one pop. Fantastic, like yes. But it's free. That's called prefix hijacking. <laughs> that's, an, that's an attack. You discovered it from the other side. That's an attack you can do to be Yes, I was going there. I, was going, I can hijack all the connections inside the US. True, Everyone true. Wants. And this can happen today, actually. This is one of the big problems with BGP. Uh, and there there is no privacy in BGP. I think there is no security. There is very little security, correct. Okay, but let me come back to this topic. That's very correct. Uh, but what you asked actually remind me that also the next hop is another attribute, and, and, and so on. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we have ten minutes more. Okay. Now let's see uh, another feature of BGP, and this we will see it by example. Let me ask you. Okay. So we already said uh, what policy routing is, and uh, and a particular uh, facet of uh, policy routing is what is called in the internet valley free routing. This basically uh, word describes how packets are routed today in the internet. It means that uh, they don't go through valleys. Don't go through valleys. Uh, packets uh, follow uh, uh, typically a hierarchical paths that they go uphill the hierarchy uh, and then downhill. This results uh, from two uh, main types of uh, business agreements we have today in the internet. Uh, the first business type of business agreement is the so-called client to provider uh, service level agreement. So this is a contractual agreement between two internet service providers. This is a client and the other is a provider. And then we have a second type of uh, uh, agreement that has nothing to do with, with uh, BitTorrent and peer-to-peer -peer networks, but it's called peer-to-peer -peer agreement. Agreement. Now, the client to provider case is fairly straightforward. A client goes to a bigger uh, provider, uh, we pay the provider, the provider carries our traffic uh, to all over the 
transits our tra traffic uh, for the entire internet and gets traffic back to us that is destined for us. All right. Uh, now, the case of our peer-to-peer -peer agreement is a little bit more subtle. Uh, usually, it happens between uh, two autonomous systems of, let's say, similar size, uh, which basically the one wouldn't be a client of the other, neither the other could be a client of the other. You know, they're both players of the same strength, let's say. So, in this case, let's say that we have, let's see another example. Okay, and let's say that we have Ote and uh, Fortnite. Okay, uh, here in Greece. And let's say that they want to exchange traffic. Uh, if we only had the uh, one way to exchange traffic, if like no one accepts to be a client of the other, so they could go through their provider. And let's say that their provider is a Deutsche Telekom, a big European ISP. Okay. So if they exchange traffic like that, so for this traffic, they would both pay Deutsche Telekom to exchange local traffic. So instead of doing this, uh, and moreover, this traffic could also leave. They could exchange it in German instead of Greece, for example. They could also leave uh, the country. Uh, instead of doing this, they do the following. They establish a peer-to-peer peer-to-peer uh, agreement directly between them um, and this agreement is used to carry only the traffic of their customers it's only for the local traffic uh, that is used okay the traffic <coughs> that originates from their customers and goes to their customers so it's used only for this traffic and usually this does not involve any money exchange. Okay, so s since we are similar size players, yes. Um, okay, uh, I understand that, but if Hotel uh, connects directly to Deutsche Telekom, Fortnite connects directly to Deutsche Telekom, and they have a peer-to-peer -peer connection between, between them. Let's say uh, Hotel wants to Many customers of Ote communicate with another provider, not Fortnite. Popper utilized the Ote Deutsche Telekom connection. What stops Ote from sending traffic through Fortnite out of Fortnite to Deutsche Telekom? Thanks. So thanks, Michali, for asking this. Uh, because this is exactly the, uh, what I wanted to conclude um, this with. Um, so, I don't know, did you guys follow the question of Michalis? Not exactly. You have both the peer-to-peer -peer connection and the Deutsche Telekom connection. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have one path here from OTE out. And Michalis asks if this gets congested. Why can't I use this path? And in this way, I can... So I use an alternative path. Yes. Um, so here there are a, a couple of things. Uh, actually, this is exactly what uh, Valley Free uh, uh, says that it should not happen. So this would be a valley in the terminology of, uh, uh, of BGP. Uh, and the, the Valley Free model says that these valleys are not allowed, are not possible. Uh, it's policies. Uh, what the Fortnite administrator will do, it's, it will put some filters here, and the advertisements it will get from Deutsche Telekom, it will not 
uh, and basically announce them to Ote. Okay, I don't mean them. I will create a proxy inside Fortnite and I touch but whenever I want. Or a VPN. Fortnite will never understand that I send the budget. It's it can see the IP of the client of hotel. I send the package. You could do this at layer 5, above layer 3. Yes. You could do this. No, uh, it doesn't under, Fortnite doesn't understand that the package leaving uh, to Deutsche Telekom is from hotel because the IPs are changed, the Macs are, are changed, so I yes. send traffic for free. Yes, you could do this if you use a proxy. I mean, if you have a proxy, you basically use one path that goes to the client and then from there you use a second path that goes out. Correct. Um, true, you could do this, but you cannot do it at layer 3, at, at the routing layer. Okay. So this is invisible to BGP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, Nice, uh, you get the mentality thing, that's uh, a <laughs> good point. <laughs> yes, but why should we have both? Uh, I mean, um, why have <coughs> both peer-to-peer -peer and the client provider? Uh, <coughs> because connection. the peer-to-peer -peer connection uh, will help you drop your transit costs. But you need them, uh, but you need Deutsche Telekom. Uh, for other destinations. For other. No, for Fortnet and for other peers, you will send it directly to them. Uh, but if I want to go to non-local guys, I'll go through Deutsche Telekom. So basically, this is pretty much how it works. For local guys, you do peering. For local small guys, you want them as customers. And for global uh, large guys, you go through your transit provider. So now, let me say one last thing. This means that paths usually, so assume here that uh, these are autonomous systems. They will go from a client to provider. You can have also many client to provider links. Then you could have one peer-to-peer -peer link. But if you cross a peer-to-peer -peer link, you can only go downhills, and then you go for a provider to client, for, an, for a provider to client. So this is what the Valley Free model says. Uh, it says that you can have uh, an uphill segment of this, it could be also a zero uphill segment of zero or more links. Then you can have again zero or one peer-to-peer -peer link on top, and then you have a downhill segment. Okay, and with this we take a break. Okay, so let's uh, uh, move on. Um, and now in this part uh, um, we will briefly discuss, uh, see some problems with the uh, And let's start with a video. What happens when you send an email or buy something online? Most of what you do online requires sending data to other computers. These other computers, say servers for Gmail or Target.com, then send data back to you and your device. But how does the data know where to go? Can it get lost or stolen along the way? The first steps are simple. Your computer is connected to your local network, which is connected to a big internet service provider like Verizon or Comcast. But the next steps require navigating and navigating connections all across the world. Your data could take billions of possible routes. The problem is they are not all created equally. Some move like airliners, others like Greyhound buses. Data finds its way across this web using something called the BGP protocol. Routers use BGP to decide the best way to get data to their destination. This works great so long as the routers get reliable information. When bad information gets into the system, trouble starts. The bad information can be a mistake, like in 2008 when an ISP in Pakistan accidentally posted the equivalent of an online billboard directing all of the world's YouTube traffic to its servers, causing them to crash. YouTube was offline for hours. 
or the bad information can be a lie. When a hacker rerouted traffic from several countries to an ISP in Canada to steal bitcoins, sometimes it's not clear whether the bad information is a mistake or a lie. Huge flows of U.S. military data passed through China during an 18-minute incident in 2010. Experts are still unsure whether the hijack was intentional. When internet traffic gets sent off course, intentionally or not, it's called a BGP hijack. They happen every day, and it's not clear how to stop them. Good video. Oh, nice video, huh? Mm -hmm. happy. I just found it. Uh, okay. Um, <coughs> um, I guess it's pretty clear um, what it is about. So, BGP um, has a number of problems uh, on the other side. Um, and, and as I said in the beginning of this uh, course, uh, it's a protocol that uh, stands out uh, for uh, the trouble it carries. It's a troubled uh, protocol. It has uh, uh, several problems. Uh, it's basically a synonym of, of problem. BGP is a problem uh, for many people uh, that are in this area. Uh, and uh, um, um, naturally a topic of uh, lots of uh, discussion and research. What is also particularly interesting uh, about BGP uh, is uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, stuck with it. It's, it's very, very difficult to change. Uh, remember that uh, uh, in uh, 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 another lecture we talked about uh, falsified protocols. Mm -hmm. uh, so BGP, I, I, I would feel comfortable to say uh, that is uh, the most falsified uh, protocol, uh, one that uh, we cannot change uh, uh, because it does not uh, simply involve uh, upgrades in the hardware or in the software. Uh, or uh, an investment to something else. Everybody has to change. Uh, not feasible today at uh, the scale. Okay, so let's do now uh, something different. Okay, maybe I will shortcut this um, because we don't have too much time. But yeah, instead of spending too much time on it, I will just tell you. Uh, so some of the problems of BGP is that uh, um, we don't have authentication. What Michal said and also what this video said. If somebody announces, if I go and announce that I am YouTube, Okay, BGP buys it. It cannot distinguish a lie uh, from the truth. Okay, um, and that's a big problem. Uh, we also don't have uh, uh, a, a authorization. If I send you a path, I say that yeah, if you want to go to YouTube, come through me. Uh, no one. Can uh, BGP doesn't have a, a way to show that I'm authorized to to make this announcement for YouTube for YouTube. So no authentication, no authorization. Uh, also, uh, several other problems. Uh, another uh, problem is uh, the difficulty in the configuration of uh, BGP routers. Uh, 
which is uh, tedious uh, and it can take a lot of time and, and uh, is also fairly complex. Uh, we have also problems uh, from uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, paths are not optimal. Uh, and, uh, uh, as we saw in the previous example, uh, we can uh, pass through several hops until we reach a destination uh, and, and, and so on. Yes, uh... yes, Michali, good point. Uh, there are no very good ways presently, <laughs> especially for BGP prefix hijacking. Um, what is, uh, but I don't want to be totally pessimistic, that's my point of view. Uh, um, what is going on now a lot in the industry uh, and in this ecosystem uh, is something that is called uh, RPKI, uh, that is uh, uh, a certificate uh, infrastructure uh, that can be used uh, to uh, enha enhance BGP security. This is promoted a lot the last uh, maybe 5-10 years. Uh, and it has uh, attracted some uh, adoption. I think it's around 7% uh, around that uh, fraction of the autonomous systems are using this. Uh, but it's small. And the bad thing is uh, without a significant adoption, you cannot reap the benefit. Because it only protects you from you know, few cases. Okay, that's the solution uh, <laughs> to the problem. Uh, okay, now we we'll switch topic, and uh, I will discuss about uh, an idea that we call um, uh, routing outsourcing, and uh, that is based on um, SDN. Uh, uh, principles um, here. So I, I skip some uh, slides. <coughs> so how many of you know what is outsourcing? Uh, IT outsourcing. Maybe use your sources more than they can offer. Overuse your resources. No. Oh, not, uh, not exactly. Um, basically, uh, the practice of hiring an external company to manage your IT infrastructure. Um, and, and this is a common business model, uh, especially for IT, uh, uh, and uh, it is used a lot uh, uh, in, uh, in the industry. Um, uh, and uh, the idea here uh, is to do a, a form of outsourcing uh, for uh, internet routing. Um, um, okay, uh, and, and let's see this with a picture. Let's say that we have uh, a, a, an autonomous system, and uh, the autonomous system uh, has uh, its infrastructure. Um, uh, it has uh, uh, routing uh, on top of the infrastructure, uh, and uh, on top of routing, uh, an internet service provider may, may have uh, um, some uh, services. It uh, sells like uh, cloud hosting uh, or uh, uh, over the top video IPTV uh, and things like that uh, to its clients. Uh, 
Um, and, and this idea basically um, uh, argues uh, that uh, uh, we say that we should get an external company, uh, an external contractor, uh, to do the management of the routing uh, for an internet service provider. Um, uh, and this uh, 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 makes sense for uh, uh, various reasons. One reason is that uh, routing uh, uh, and BGP management is uh, very complicated and usually, uh, uh, especially small internet service providers, don't have uh, uh, the expertise uh, Manage BGP. Um, I think uh, it wouldn't be uh, a lie to say that it might need to uh, take a PhD to understand how BGP works. That uh, it can be that complicated. Um, um, Okay, also, of course, routing uh, has various limitations, uh, 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 like uh, misconfiguration, uh, the computation uh, paths are, can be suboptimal, um, and, and so on. Do you have any questions so far? So, so far? Yes. So you only hire the, the outsourcing service uh, to do the routing? and you keep the high-level services, uh, you will do the high-level services as the autonomous system, or you will uh, let the contractor do it as well? Uh, so we let the, so the high-level services stay local, and we let the contractor uh, take care of the optimization of the routing. Okay. So now for brevity, I won't cover all, all the details uh, uh, to, to move on. Okay, um, and now uh, let's put here, uh, let's see how we could uh, uh, realize this now using a controller and using uh, SDN. Okay, um, uh, so um, here on the, uh, the bottom you see uh, the a autonomous system uh, uh, with uh, uh, basically its routers and so on. Uh, and then on the top we see the contractor uh, that takes care of routing within this uh, autonomous system. Uh, we call this service uh, routing uh, as a service. Uh, uh, Okay, and to realize this, we need to uh, to give to the contractor uh, information, of course, about the uh, the state of the network, the topology of the network. Uh, uh, we need uh, also to give uh, to give him information about what service level agreements we want, what latency guarantees, bandwidth, and so on, um, and uh, the. A contractor through a platform, uh, uh, through an SDN-based platform, can take care of uh, the uh, routing optimization within the client network. Yes, Michali. Uh, as I understand from the figure, the contractor has the controller uh, where he is. Correct? You're right, right. Okay, so I am the AS and I have the whole network. The contractor is somewhere else and he controls the controller. Let's say I am uh, AS in Greece and the contractor is IBM in America. So, when I have a packet in, I can send a packet in to the contractor and wait for a reply, packet out. So, I can use latency as I understand from the first packet. And for every flow, I have latency. Correct, uh, Michael, that, that's correct. Uh, um, I don't think that's something that I'm able to 
But uh, let me tell you the, the full story. Um, basically, this is simplified. So basically, to answer this, we need here, uh, basically what you see here, a network hypervisor okay. um, that is basically a, a proxy that can also be a proxy of the controller uh, and that uh, can answer uh, some packets, packet things locally. So the hypervisor can answer as a controller. Right, right. Is involved, I think. True, that is correct. That is correct. That's uh, basically um, a, a, a point of uh, discussion with SDN in general that you have a, a centralized controller. Yes, but if you have the controller in your network, you will have a latency about 20 milliseconds. When you have to connect with USA or another continent, you could have latency about maybe a second. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. So we we need a control. We need a proxy for that. We, we need a proxy. Okay. So then let's assume now that we um, have this routing as a service contractor. Um, uh, so basically, assume that this guy um, uh, has multiple clients. Uh, so what we could do here is that we could use a, a, a controller to manage mul multiple autonomous systems, uh, over multiple autonomous systems. Okay, uh, let's say that we have this uh, multi-domain uh, routing operating system. Uh, uh, and then... Uh, uh, in addition uh, uh, to the uh, multi-domain uh, controller, uh, on top we could start uh, building uh, uh, new uh, uh, applications in the SDN style uh, for doing optimizations now uh, across uh, multiple domains. Uh, for selecting, for example, uh, better paths uh, than uh, what uh, BGP selects. Uh, or for dynamically uh, doing uh, application-specific forwarding uh, or dynamic uh, tunneling. Uh, so we do SDN at the inter-domain uh, uh, this way. Um, okay. And now if we uh, extend this idea further, uh, uh, we could have... Uh, uh, in the future, uh, an ecosystem uh, where we have uh, multiple such contractors uh, uh, that operate uh, uh, in the internet. Uh, these contractors have their own clients, their client autonomous systems, uh, and they build these clusters of, of clients. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, uh, what happens here uh, is that uh, uh, in the same way that uh, uh, we can use uh, SDN to basically uh, uh, innovate and evolve routing within an autonomous system, uh, with this outsourcing approach, uh, we could use SDN also to basically uh, evolve and change BGP uh, within the domains of, uh, uh, of these contractors. So this guy inside here now, he doesn't need uh, to use BGP anymore. He could use his own protocol, like uh, we could build our own inter-domain routing protocol that is much cooler, uh, more quality of service aware, uh, uh, smarter, more green, uh, better latency, um, you name it, uh, and use it here. And another guy could provide some other uh, Interdomain routing protocol in his own domain. Still, uh, with the legacy internet, with the standard in, in the, uh, uh, internet, BGP could be preserved in the borders, so we maintain backwards compatibility. So basically, um, this contractor becomes um, uh, a, an incubator. Uh, thermokitida, as we say in English, uh, that uh, 
uh, can uh, 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 basically lead to chains uh, of the interdomain uh, routing protocol uh, within uh, his cluster of interest. And also a nice thing about this approach uh, <coughs> is that it's also an ecosystem. There are economic benefits associated with it and it makes sense economically. Um, also, this guy uh, builds what is called that an economy of scale. Uh, economy of scale is basically uh, when the cost of your service uh, per unit drops with the number of units you have. Um, that's what is an economy of scale. The unit here are the clients. Like if you have one client, um, the cost uh, uh, per client is going to be higher than if you have a hundred clients. Uh, so if you build a, a customer base, uh, then uh, the cost for offering like this service drops. Uh, and this is a good thing. It leads to economics of scale. Uh, uh, and therefore, you can also reduce the costs for managing uh, and for uh, BGP um, compared to today. Okay, uh, I don't want to basically uh, spend uh, too much time with all the details of, of this approach. So you can see the, the, the slides for more details. And, and they, these are uh, some publications. So basically for this idea, um, uh, we have a, a project that is running, that is a five-year project. Um, and um, uh, there are various things that we explore related to this basic uh, principle and with uh, uh, improving uh, BGP and uh, interdomain routing. So um, read here for, for more. Um, so do you want to, before I move on, do you want to ask something? Ali? No. Okay. Um, Okay, um, let's now discuss briefly uh, Siren. Uh, so, uh, Siren um, is a, a platform um, uh, for, uh, as I said in the beginning, for doing uh, uh, experiments uh, with uh, BGP and with uh, uh, SDN. Um, it allows you to emulate uh, uh, multiple uh, autonomous uh, systems uh, uh, and uh, it uses uh, real router software. Uh, in particular, it uses uh, Quagga, that is uh, a well-known uh, open source routing uh, uh, suite. Uh, that is uh, used uh, uh, in the internet by uh, many internet service providers. 
Um, the purpose of this platform that uh, has also been uh, developed uh, by Vasilis and uh, other colleagues uh, 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 in, here and in Switzerland uh, is uh, basically to allow to do experiments where you have both BGP uh, and uh, also uh, SDN. Uh, and uh, a driving use case uh, for building this platform has been the model of uh, routing outsourcing that uh, I, I, I talked about. Uh, so in this model, for example, uh, as, a, as an example of what you can do with the siren, uh, uh, you could build uh, uh, clusters of uh, uh, autonomous systems uh, that are managed uh, by a centralized controller uh, that uh, 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 communicates with OpenFlow uh, with uh, the autonomous systems. Uh, and uh, at the same time, these clusters uh, use BGP uh, to speak uh, with other autonomous systems that uh, run Quagga. Uh, that is uh, uh, a, a, diff a, a classical BGP router. Okay, so these are the key uh, uh, software uh, that uh, Silent is, is based on. <coughs> okay, first we have Mininet, then we have Quagga. So this is a new entry, basically. Uh, then we have POX and then we have XABGP. So who knows what is XABGP? So basically it's a, uh, it's a library that uh, when you write a Python script, it, uh, it allows you to uh, I exchange BGP messages with real BGP routers um, and this is used uh, uh, within Siren especially for the SDN controller uh, part of, uh, of Siren ok also Siren has uh, some features that uh, try to automate the configuration of uh, uh, of uh, an experiment. Um, so, for example, it allows uh, um, uh, it automatically allows uh, 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 assigns IP addresses, uh, and it also has features that enable you to uh, to automatically run batch uh, exper experiments. Uh, assume that you want to run an experiment fifty times with uh, different parameters uh, to evaluate the sensitivity instead of having to do this manually uh, it allows you to uh, to manage these experiments automatically uh, and to manage multiple virtual machines that can run uh, experiments uh, for you uh, of uh, different uh, siren instances Okay, in addition, it has a, a visualization interface that I'm going to show in a little bit with a, a brief demo. Uh, uh, it uh, further on uh, uh, collects um, uh, uh, measurements about uh, packet loss in the network. It has features that allows you to do these measurements easily without having to, to, hack, to write the code yourself. Uh, uh, and of course it has log uh, collection and analysis. Okay, um, further on, uh, Siren has uh, some uh, features that are specific to BGP, uh, which basically is what you see uh, in, in this list. So it allows you to announce uh, IP prefixes uh, from the command line. Um, it waits until uh, the network has converged. So do, do you understand what I mean with converged? 
cover the whole topology, probably. Uh, not precisely, but... Uh, Every router is set and ready to work, and then we have a stable routing. True, co correct. So it measures the time it takes to converge, measures the update rates, uh, it can detect setups uh, where you do not have convergence that will uh, loop forever, and also it allows you to automatically configure valet free policies in the Quagga routers. This basically uh, is the process of uh, doing the filters we mentioned before that you need to have a filter that filters the announcements uh, for you uh, uh, that uh, basically uh, uh, is uh, referred to here okay there are three forms of using uh, the tool the one form is through the command line interface uh, uh, manually. The other form is uh, through, visu through the visualization interface uh, that basically you can interactively uh, take out down links and take them up again and so on. And then you have the experiment management uh, which can be used when you have uh, many experiments that you want to run. Uh, and you can distribute them to multiple virtual machines automatically, uh, run the experiments, collect back the results, uh, and uh, have them in a, in a single place. Okay, so this is what the visualization looks like. So here we have the topology. And... Uh, here you see um, the time since the last command you, you entered, uh, the time it takes to converge, the links uh, that are up and down with different colors, uh, and also the type of uh, nodes we have. So these blue nodes are uh, end hosts, and the green nodes are... Uh, Basically, green nodes, uh, I think they are uh, the BGP cluster, the legacy BGP cluster, while the orange nodes are the SDN cluster. So let, let's now do, see a, a brief demo that we did um, uh, in the past. Vasilis uh, uh, did this demo, um, and we have it on tape. There is documentation for site. Packet repository. Which one? Which one? Read me. Yes, but only this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 But uh, the, the rest of it is in, uh, in uh, English. Okay. 
Θέλουμε το Εδώ να το διακόψω. Uh, I don't know if you guys see the arrows here, so the, the current routing configuration. Okay, at the stable state. The, the green arrows. I don't know if they are visible. And the AS1, that is the destination, I think it's this one or that one, it's one of the two. The middle one is the middle this one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the BGP, green are the BGP autonomous systems uh, and orange are again BGP autonomous systems that are managed by the multi-AES controller in, in this experiment. This is just an example experiment uh, uh, that basically shows <coughs> uh, the visual interface. Uh, now, uh, what is interesting here uh, so is that uh, in the back end we have uh, a real BGP router is running on top of Mininet uh, and uh, we will see live uh, the changes, some of the changes, the changes that happen off the bat, we will see them live here in the visual interface. Okay. The convergence time, is it time to set up the SDN uh, clusters or all of the topology? It's the time until we compute uh, the stable paths. To compute the paths, okay. From the beginning. Okay, now we will start taking, taking links one by one down and you will see how the green uh, uh, arrows will uh, uh, change to reflect the new paths. And uh, I, I repeat, the nice thing is that we use real router software in the, in the background. Um, Όπως βλέπετε έχουμε σε όλες τις από όλους τους όμβους και επίσης από το AES Cluster. Και πάντα μπορείτε να ρίξετε κάποιο link ανάμεσα σε δύο BGP όμβους. Βλέπετε πώς γίνεται η σύγκληση, βλέπετε η σύγκληση στο άλλο μονοπάτι. Αυτό συνέβη επειδή αυτός έχει στηρίξει ήδη το μονοπάτι που, πρέπει, που, έχει, που έχει λάβει από πριν. Μπορείτε να ρίξετε links επίσης ανάμεσα σε ένα BGP AES και σε ένα SDN AES. Εδώ θέλει λίγο μεγαλύτερη ώρα ε, για τον εξή λόγο. Ε, όταν αυτό το link πέ, ε, πέσει, όταν το session πέσει, ε, αν θυμάστε καλά το session είναι decoupled από το switch. Δηλαδή το κάνουμε outsourcing σε ένα controller. Οπότε μπορεί να πάει λίγη ώρα μέχρι ε, η έξω από την GP να καταλάβει ότι πράγμα το session έχει πέσει. Αυτό είναι επειδή κάνουμε outsourcing το, το control plane. Ε, γιατί θέλω φυσικά να δείξετε link μέσα στο, oh, sorry, μέσα στο cluster και να δείτε πώ. Μέσα στο κλάσσι και να δείτε πώς ε, αντιδρά. Εδώ πούμε, αυτό που συμβαίνει είναι ότι ε, ο controller, ε, περνάμε λίγο στο controller να, να καταλάβει ότι το link έχει πέσει. Αυτό γίνεται με LNDP Discovery. Οπότε όταν αυτό γίνει κατανοητό, υπολογίζει το μόνο να πάρει μέσω δίξτρα και να πάρει μέσω σε ένα γράφο. Και τώρα θα να προκληθείτε ότι γίνεται στο, σε επίπεδο CLI, δηλαδή όλα τα update events. Ή να κάνετε ακόμα και λίγο. Ναι, η πράσινη κόβη πρέπει να κουάγκα, η πορτοκάλη πρέπει να κουάγκα από τις και ο κοντρόλερ, επειδή δεν κάνει διαφορά για πλέον, είναι έχει ένα BGP speaker, ο οποίος είναι κουάγκα, είναι, sorry, έχει ένα BGP speaker, ο οποίος είναι κουάγκα και χρησιμοποιείς ένα BGP για να στείλει μηνύματα στο υπόλοιπο δίκτυο. Από ό,τι είναι αυτό, γίνεται λίγο με οργανωτικό κόβητα. Το θέμα είναι ότι για να, και ποια θέλετε να πάρει σε πίεδο κόμβου αριθμού κόβων π.χ. 40 ή 50, Χρειάζεται ένα λίγο δυνατό μηχάνημα ή ένα cloud VM. Γιατί αυτό συντάσσει και η δομή τα limitation στο mininet. Δηλαδή είναι πάνω από το mininet χτισμένο. Οπότε ό,τι μπορεί να κάνει και το mininet μπορεί να κάνει και αυτό. Οκ. Θα σα ρωτήσω κάτι. Ναι. Αν το S6 στο S7 link was down. Uh, the new green line was calculated for the new shortest path right. via the extra algorithm. Uh, by uh, no, by distance vector. Mm. Okay. But, so here the policies are essentially we ignore policies for this demo, and we assume that everybody runs a shortest path, but it's not Dijkstra. Dijkstra is used only within the cluster of SDN. Outside, uh, we use BGP and VS path selection. It's not Dijkstra; it's a path vector. Okay. 
Yes. So in a NSDM cluster, it takes more time to convert than a, than a B2B cluster. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> yes, in this experiment it did, uh, Michal, that's a good observation. Um, I expect the B2B to take longer because it has to announce a withdrawal, but... Uh, so in general, uh, look at the slides for more. Uh, the slides uh, have an extensive, like, uh, an extensive discussion on this point uh, about the BGP convergence. Uh, so basically, <coughs> these plots are about the BGP convergence. In general, the BGP convergence time drops in the, with the more SDN you have, but um, it's not that simple. Um, uh, uh, there are also exceptions to that. Um, uh, and there is more uh, more insights uh, related uh, to this. It's not that simple. In it, we, we also saw cases where when it gets worse. So it's a it's a complex uh, interaction. Uh, and actually, it was um, uh, when we analyzed this, uh, it took us a lot of time to to dig into it and try to understand what it really uh, is going on. Um, Okay, now I would like to conclude, uh, first of all, with some pointers. Uh, these slides are online. I think these pointers, first look at this YouTube video about Siren, it's seven, eight minutes. Uh, then there is also a lecture uh, that is uh, more detailed about Siren, if you want to see the more advanced uh, features of uh, and also the experiments we did in more detail. This is available here um, and in the open courses. And of course, on Thursday, uh, uh, in the um, like a session, we will discuss uh, uh, we will discuss this more. Can I ask something? Yes, yes. I can't understand why someone didn't open a company where you connect yeah, in their ASs, um, you connect ASs, and uh, you don't use BGP because BGP is problematic, but you use SDN. Since you can do it, because we saw that you can connect uh, ASs writing your own code, why not write your own code and provide security uh, while use... Um, BGP, which is problematic. Since you can uh, be a provider to someone and uh, um, give secure services, um, why trust BGP? Uh, someone who say that uh, uh, SDN doesn't completely solve the problem uh, and, uh, of security in particular. Um, uh, this is uh, one uh, part of the answer. There are also some security problems with SDN. Yes, but, but you are not in the legacy, you are not stuck into the legacy problems. You have other problems to solve. Uh, to solve. I mean, um, you, you have more, uh, more things to do, so you can uh, use them to create a secure network. Between to create a secure connection between the autonomous systems, yes. um, other than using I think the legacy. This could happen in the future, and I think now is the time that uh, a lot of things are changing in the internet routing ecosystem, also with SDN. Um, and uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, um, uh, happening in the future. Okay, uh, two last things. First of all, something that you are all interested in, uh, the oral exams. Uh, uh, have what? Tuesday. Six. Okay. Uh, they are on the 9th of January. Monday, uh, 9th of January, we will have the oral exams. Uh, mark your calendars. Uh, for that day, um, we'll make uh, an announcement, and then uh, uh, tomorrow at 11 uh, here we have a guest uh, uh, speakers.
uh, as I said in the beginning to some of you, uh, that uh, they will present uh, 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 the Dimoscopio, Heraklion Dimoscopio, uh, that is something very interesting and exciting. The speakers are really uh, fantastic. They're worldwide uh, known about uh, uh, some of the work they do on uh, uh, basically uh, getting a, a, a team of people uh, and uh, to take uh, uh, synergistically uh, decisions and to try to synergistically very modern techniques that are called co-design and co-creation uh, to discuss and uh, uh, try to solve uh, uh, complex problems. Um, uh, and they will uh, discuss about uh, a new initiative that is taking place in Heraklion. Um, and uh, if you are around, come. I think it's going to be at 11 o'clock in this lecture. I think it's, it's, it's definitely going to be a, a, one of the very good lectures you have seen. Uh, uh, <coughs> um. Okay, that's for all for today.